Hey everyone, this is Scott from SerpMedia.com and in this video I'll be covering the Fast Velocity Minify plugin. Fast Velocity Minify is a plugin similar to Auto Optimize in that while it doesn't handle page caching, it does combine your assets and optimize the performance of your CSS, JS, and HTML. When you first install the plugin, it'll add a menu under Settings and then it'll be Fast Velocity Minify. You'll have a status page. The status page is just a list of CSS, JS files that have been processed and then the total amount of files that have been cached. You can also delete the cache right here by clicking purge under the status page. Under the settings window, window is where you actually get the ability to start modifying the plugin. For instance, you can enable an admin bar purge which will allow you to simply purge the cache from your admin bar. Similar to auto optimize, I'll show you what it looks like briefly. You click settings and then it'll say FVM purge. You can then also enable or disable the preserve settings, which this functionality allows the plugin to save the settings even when it's uninstalled. And then finally, there is the ability to disable merging in CSS for NJS while logged in. I'm going to disable this, but you should leave it checked for your own website. I'm disabling it solely to show you what the options do. And then the preserve settings function, I recommend that you uncheck because if you're ever going to delete the plugin, the last thing you want is to leave the data in your database. After we've modified that, I'm going to hit save and now we're going to begin. Under the URL options, you, you can detect if you're using an SSL or a regular HTTP URL. You can almost always leave it on, auto, on the auto detect functionality. Otherwise, if you find that it's spitting out an error or not working, you can either choose to force it as HTTPS or HTTP depending on your configuration. With the plugin installed, you gain some you gain some interesting functionality that isn't always clear. The cleanup header will remove resource hints, which is the DNS prefetch request. And a DNS prefetch it just tells the browser to start downloading the the URL that it provides. And then you also get the ability to disable HTML minification because by default it is enabled, as you can see. And then you can strip out HTML comments. We're going to strip HTML comments out because there's no reason to leave them enabled. If you ever notice any breakage when you're using this functionality, you might very well need to disable the HTML minification. Commonly, it may be inline JS errors or some styling may not look right, but it looks like I'm clear without any errors. You then have the option for fonts. This is mostly meant to optimize Google fonts and to reduce the number of requests. By default, it disables Google font merging. On most complicated websites, you're going to want to uncheck this. And then if you have a lot of Google fonts, you have the option to remove them completely, but this will obviously affect the styling of your website. And then you can also remove emojis and smileys.js, which is the only option that I recommend under this setting. And then under the Google font sub option, you have the ability to optimize the Google fonts further. You can inline the Google font CSS. What this will do is it will move the contents of these Google font CSS file and move it inline to the document. This is actually not the option I recommend. While it does remove the request for it, it's typically better to use preload and async the Google font files. The reason for this is that the Google font CSS file performs a browser specific optimizations. For instance, if the browser supports HTTP2, it will only lower, and not HTTP2, if it supports WAF2 formats, it will only load the WAF2 format in the CSS file. This way it serves the smallest file possible while maintaining compatibility with older browsers. The async Google fonts will use the preload attribute and load the CSS while using a polyfill. polyfill. What this means is the CSS file will no longer hinder the, the browser from rendering the rest of the website, but this, the Google fonts will also be downloaded. You can also do the same thing with Font Awesome if you're using it. And when you get into these sub options, you have the option to what I'm going to call cheat the test. The final option in the Font Awesome and the Google Fonts is async and exclude Font Awesome CSS from PageSpeed Insights. All that this does is make the PageSpeed Insights test rank better. It doesn't even make your website faster. All that it does is it does a check via JavaScript that says, if this is the PageSpeed Insights test, simply don't load the resource. Yeah, you get a higher performance grade because I've already discovered and I've written blog posts on and I've made a video on 
the page speed insight says isn't used as a ranking factor. So there's no reason for you to actually use that option. This is truly just a good thing to do if you're being paid to optimize somebody's website instead of feeding them the truth, you just turn these options on to make the website look like it's doing much better in the testing when it's really not. What I do recommend for the font awesome option is to do the exact same thing with the async Google fonts. You can either load the font awesome with preload and the polyfill as the fallback, or you could just merge it with the rest of the inline CSS. There's no reason to not merge it in this case because font awesome icons aren't typically necessary to, and they're not core content. If you're using an extremely large amount of font awesome icons, then you would probably need to async load them in so that way they can appear faster. But otherwise, merging them is typically fine for most situations. Under the CSS options, we can go through these settings again. You could disable CSS processing, which completely disables all of the CSS functionality. You could disable minification, so the files will be merged but not minified. And the first two options I don't recommend using. But what you can do is preserve the order of CSS files, which is important. When you're merging CSS, it's important that the files are being merged in the order that they appear in the HTML markup. And the reason for that is that since CSS is very, it's a cascading effect of if one file, for instance, your parent theme has a rule in the CSS style sheet and you're overriding it in the child theme, which appears after the main style sheet, you want to make sure that it's loading after so that way your overrides are still taking effect. You can then also disable print related style sheets. So if the CSS files include print, they will be removed from the site. I wouldn't uncheck this option. If the media type of the CSS file is print, then it will not necessarily load until it has to. And if you remove this, if somebody goes to print your page out, which is becoming very, very, very scarce, then they would look distorted because your print CSS is non-existent. Most websites don't even have print CSS anymore. There's tools like print friendly that exist solely for this functionality. But if you have it and you want to maintain the ability for your pages to print correctly, uncheck this option. Finally, this is where this plugin starts to make harebrained suggestions. Inline CSS in the footer. If selected, any fast velocity minified generated CSS files in the footer will be inlined. There is no reason to inline large chunks of CSS in the footer. There is no reason to do that. First of all, if it's in the footer, it's already non-render blocking. But if you inline it while you're taking out the request, you're making the CSS that was in those files uncacheable, which is not recommended. And the one thing you never want to do is check the second option to inline it, whether it's in the head or the footer. Inlining CSS for the whole website is really bad. And the reason for that is, is if you're inlining the entire CSS files, they're completely uncacheable. You also get a really large HTML document size, which can slow down the rendering of the page. And it can also lead to issues in terms of processing on the server. If you inline large amounts of CSS on a very slow host, the page cache generation, depending on the plugin you're using, can be quite slow because it's having to generate a very large um, HTML file for every single page because you're inlining the CSS. Just don't do it. You should only be inlining critical CSS because you want to maintain the file to be cacheable and you don't want to clutter up the main HTML document. And then you have the option for the JavaScript options, which are basically the exact same. You could disable the functionality completely or you can disable the minification, but still allow them to be merged. Then you have the render blocking JavaScript functionality. Now you can enable dis de defer parsing of the folio fast, uh, the fast velocity minify JS files globally. What this will do is it will try to defer all the JS files as it can. Certain themes and plugins may not be supported of this. One thing I do recommend is you check the next option for skipping the deferring of jQuery. Almost always jQuery has some sort of dependency in your theme that requires it to be render blocking. And that's kind of the sad fact of where WordPress development is at because jQuery has been the default library in WordPress for the longest time. It's going to have a lot of dependencies and a lot of themes and plugins that are dependent on it. So it's best to just simply skip it to avoid issues.
unless you're a developer who has either worked on the website or you're a developer who diagnosed the issue, you're probably best off just skipping the deferring. While this will impact the load time of the page, it's better to have the page load a little bit slower and then for it to load broken. Then there's the page speed settings, which is completely, I hate these sections. So you could exclude enable defer on all JS only for page speed insights. So that way the page speed insights test looks better. And then you can exclude the JS files in the ignore list from page speed insights. Again, if you're optimizing for page speed insights, you're not optimizing for your user. And the page speed insights test isn't used for ranking. This is, truly just a means of developers trying to get around the system. If you paid somebody in the past to optimize your website, then, and they use this plugin, I would highly suggest that you check these settings to make sure they didn't run them, that they didn't enable it solely to make you go away and to make you feel like your website's faster than it actually is. But I also have to let you know that it's not a ranking factor. PageSpeed Insights is not used at all as a ranking factor. It doesn't matter that it's made by Google. Google's PageSpeed Insights is based off of another team sub project known as Lighthouse. And there's another team that makes web.dev. And there's another team that maintains AMP. And none of those teams have anything to do with webmaster tools or search indexing. PageSpeed is a ranking factor, but there's some caveats around how that's calculated. And it's a lot more nuanced than just using some kind of PageSpeed Insights tool that's already out of date in terms of Lighthouse versioning. Then there's the CDN options. What this does is, as almost every other plugin does, you put in the URL of your Pulse CDN. Normally you get it from StackPath or Bunny or whoever you're using. You put the URL in, it rewrites your URLs. You can then also change the cache location of your, mer of your cache files. It doesn't matter. This is strictly just a maintaining functionality for you. Then there is the pro section. The pro section allows you to exclude CSS and JavaScript files, exclude um, external, external URLs or domains that can be merged together. So if you have a CSS or JS file from say cdn.js that you wanna merge, you can include here. You can exclude JS files from PageSpeed Insights and it includes Pixel Your Site, which is the Facebook Pixel plugin. They also, I think, do Google Analytics and maybe Pinterest, and I think they have one more. Great plugin, actually. They're a great team, too, behind them. But pay, every time you add a pixel to your website, it ultimately makes the website slower because tracking pixels are inherently a bit of expen expensive as to run, especially on mobile devices. This just bypasses them for PageSpeed Insights, which isn't helping your load time. You can also exclude the CSS files from PageSpeed Insights. And you can ignore, and then there's a default ignore list of JS that it doesn't need to merge to avoid issues. And then they also have a default blacklist that you can modify, of course, if you wish. Under the developer settings, you get additional options. You can enable the debug mode. You can enable the FVM CSS files preload and the JS preload. What this will do is it'll create HTTP headers to for the CSS files and the JS files to be preloaded by the browser ahead of time. I'll enable this option. HTTP headers, you can enable pre-connect headers here, which I'm not going to cover in this video, but pre-connect and preload are basically just means of fetching assets off-site or on-site to further improve the load time and delivery speed of those assets. Don't go crazy with these settings because having too many of them can actually hinder the performance of your website by blocking up the main thread time. You can enable async CSS. So if you have a multiple CSS files, you're able to load them entirely with async. If you have inline CSS, this functionality doesn't work. And then you can also dequeue all CSS files if you wanna test your critical CSS, but I wouldn't recommend doing this. The plugin has no built-in functionality for generating critical CSS. So if you check this option, you can get a flash of unstyled content, which I will cover now as soon as I make sure that this is working. The fast velocity minify is loaded with preload and it has the tag. So if I load this now to illustrate, when it's loading, if you saw there is a flash of where the menu and the entire page is effectively blank, that's known as a flash of unstyled content. And that's where you need to add the critical CSS of your page. If you're not a developer, finding the critical CSS can be quite difficult. And even using automated tools that you may find online may not be able to find it. 
And if you didn't write the CSS for your page, finding that critical CSS is even more difficult. So I wouldn't drive yourself crazy trying to find it. If you could run a simple online test and it says, here's your critical CSS, you can go ahead and try it. But otherwise, I would uncheck the option just to avoid the flash of unstyled content that you see. There is the server info, which is just general information for debugging that the developer can use to help you. And then there's the help screen to help you and help them find you to assist you with your problems. So the overall thoughts of this plugin are intriguing to say the least. The plugin is very effective at its job. There are just things within it that I highly disagree with. For instance, as you see, these Google fonts right now are being merged into the header. And that's probably because I didn't save the option, most likely. And it was because of that. But merging CSS files and inlining CSS files in JS files in the source can be a very tricky business. It's almost always better to leave them at files and only loading the critical CSS within the document. And as we've established, finding the critical CSS can be quite difficult. When it comes to optimizing your CSS by merging it and metafying it, the plugin does a really good job. It strips out effectively everything comment wise and all the white space. And I haven't found situations where it caused many issues. The JavaScript optimization is also quite strong. In this header, it looks to have only included jQuery JS. It does still include the comment for the copyright, but it looks like it's removed all the white space. And then it's job when it comes to benefying the rest of the JavaScript and moving into the footer, it seems to have done the job quite well. It does seem to be very much hit or miss when it comes to removing the comment tags, but other than that, I highly recommend it. If you have a specific question regarding this plugin or an implementation, please feel free to ask. If you've had a developer optimize your website and checked all the options for page speed insights, also let me know. I always find those stories to be quite funny, especially when I tell clients that somebody has done that to them in the past and they're like, well, now the score is lower. And I'm like, yeah, it was scored. It's scored lower because they faked your score. It wasn't real. But if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.